Welcome everybody <clears throat> to week number 10. Tonight, first let me do a little rehearsal. So far in the weeks, we've gone a long way. We have covered, well, let me get my glasses on. <laughs> we have covered purpose, protocol, our path, prophetic mystery, power and authority, passion, perfection, promotion, and tonight we're going to be discussing prayer as a kingdom connection. So you can see we've made it simple because all of the classes started with a P. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's going to be a blessing to those that you share this with as well. Because we're hoping, you know, the whole idea is not just that you come and hear us speak, because everything I say you need to check out with the Word of God, but also so you can teach it. So you can go and you can share it with people from a kingdom perspective. It's all about the kingdom of God. It's all about his government. Amen. Amen. So let's get into what we're talking about tonight. And then uh, in, the next, in the last few moments of this class, we want to join in the National Day of Prayer and do some praying for our country, for the world. But we want to be effective. Would you agree, everybody? Amen. We want to be powerful. And you can only do that by being, by praying the way God instructs in his word, his constitution. So let's look at this. Now hold on to your seatbelts because um, you're not going to have to write some notes, even though I did most of the notes for you. I got a feeling uh, some prophetic is going to come up <laughs> in me tonight. Amen. Matthew 26 and verse 41, part A. Matthew 26, 41. Uh, part A. Jesus told his disciples, watch and pray, that you enter not into temptation. And the word there for temptation in that regard is distraction. That's the number one enemy to our prayer life, isn't it? Yes. Distraction. For, watch and pray that you enter not into distraction. To watch is more than just keeping your physical eyes open, but to be discerning, to guard. But to watch is to be in anticipation. Yes. I think that's a very interesting part of this. To watch is to be in anticipation. For what? When he was saying, watch and pray, Every time he went up into the mountain to pray, every time you hear about the emphasis on prayer, get ready for this, it indicates a shift is going to happen. It indicates a shift is going to take place, a fresh direction. I don't know about you, but I love it when God gives fresh direction. Sometimes after I hear what it is, I'm a little nervous. But there's nothing like fresh direction when you know God is shifting you into a new season. So prayer is very significant. This is why we need to know how to pray. When they said, teach us to pray. Remember that? Jesus didn't just give them a formula. He didn't just give them a ceremony. It wasn't just now repeat after me and say the way I say it, but he was giving some protocol. He wasn't telling them now write this down and, and repeat this every time you pray. But he was talking about how we approach God. If you want to write that down, how we approach God. Number two, prayer is saying what he's speaking. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's how we approach God, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's what he wants to accomplish, saying what he's speaking, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, where? On earth, On earth as it already is in heaven. Yes. Then it's also bringing supplication, if you want to write that word down. To supplicate means to bring uh, our petitions. 
lead us not into temptation. Of course, God would never lead us into temptation. But what he means is there, don't let me to mistake something that I think you're leading that really is a temptation. Does that make sense? Deliver me from evil. That's a petition. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. So he wraps it up by exalting God, praising God. Wow. I didn't have any of that on the sheet. <laughs> but how many believe that's a powerful principle? The first part, the first part is worship. Our Father who art in heaven. The second part is intercession. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Connection. The third part is praise. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Our prayers are not based in current issues. Effective prayer. Now notice what I said. Our prayers are not based in current issues. Our prayers are based in the will of God. Our prayers are based in the will of God. Our prayers are based in the principles of the kingdom. When we pray principles, we will answer issues. Quite a lot here tonight. Too many people pray issues and they get issue minded. But when you pray the will of God, the word of God, his constitution, when you pray the principles of that constitution, it answers all issues. Really, our prayers are prophetic. Our prayers get there before we do. That's why it's important how you pray. In Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 1, the prophet said, I will stand upon my watch. Remember Jesus said, watch and pray. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. <laughs> I think it's interesting he didn't say, I'm going to set myself in the basement. I'm going to set myself on the tower. You can watch better from your elevation of being seated together in heavenly places. So he says, I will set myself upon the tower. Now, in a lot of movies, they have those towers just to see if the enemy's coming. And of course, we can see what the enemy is doing from up there. And we need to discern and be ready and prepared. It can serve the purpose of being aware that an enemy's coming. But here the tower is not for that purpose. It can do that, but it's not for that purpose. What is the purpose of the tower? It's to focus on the next level of advance. From the tower, you can see ahead. Why do I need to go up to the tower? I love this, I love it. To see what he is saying. Have you ever heard anybody say, see what I'm saying? What they're saying is, do you understand? It's not just important that God is talking to us. He wants us to see what he's saying. So that's even better than just hearing. But it's vision. Are there visionaries in this room? How about up there? So I will see what he shall say unto me. So prayer has got to be proactive. Prayer has got to be proactive, not reactive.
And again, I believe we can pray about issues according to the word. It doesn't matter what I think, <laughs> but according to the word, we can pray about issues. Would you all agree in here? Mm -hmm. But we're not, our prayer isn't set in issues. Mm -hmm. Prayer is intercession. Now there's the prayer of intercession, I know. There's intercessors, I know. But prayer in and of itself is intercession. Intercess, inter, two-way street. It's not a monologue, it's a dialogue between us and God. Prayer is asking, but not just to get. Sometimes our prayers have been asking with the definition to get something from God. But are you ready for this? When the scriptures talk about asking, it's talking about releasing. So our prayer involves releasing something in and through us. Will God do it? Yes, but guess what? He's in you now. Would you all agree? Yeah. He says, I reside in you so that you have the power to release it in my name. Mm -hmm. But not because you're reacting to something the devil's doing. But instead you are proactive. <laughs> I'm ready to activate some things. How about you? Amen. How many of you would love to just activate some fresh new dimensions on the earth that God gets the glory for? Amen. Yes, amen. amen. So prayer is pro-psych, pro-thinking, prophetic. You can say it this way, because sometimes we think of it so religiously. We, we feel like we have to pray in the King James. Prayer is a conference call. Oh, that's not spiritual enough, Dr. Rick. Well, we shouldn't just call it a conference call. Let's get real. How about that? Sometimes we try to be too spiritual and we end up just showing we're religious. Did I say that out loud? Mm -hmm. So it's an interconnecting. Everybody say interconnecting. Interconnecting, interconnecting two-way conference call. Two-way. But sometimes we treated it just like it's one way. We act like it's a monologue instead of a dialogue. But prayer is more than what we pray in our prepared speech. What we pray is what we say from a heart that glorifies God. Amen? Amen. Now you'll see what I'm saying. Hang in here with me. Because I think some people get a little alarmed. Well, I wouldn't call it a conference call, Dr. Rick. Well, that's because we, that's why we don't understand the deeper things of God, because we have so um, muddied it up with all the traditional language that we can't see that it's simple. <laughs> you know, I love how God speaks to me. I love how I can speak to him in total reverence. He's my father, but he wants me to be real. How about you? Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, says three things. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open. Now, in any of those three things, did it say might? Nope. It might be. No. It says what? Shall be. So to ask is our first line of connection. You know, when you connected with a person on the other end of the phone. So ask and it shall be given or released. You now have full access. Ooh, I love that word, don't you? into the king's throne room to release whatever according to his will that you say gets you to accomplish your God-ordained purpose. We thought ask means I got to convince him to give it to me. But ask means no, he wants to release it through me. When I ask, I'm giving him the permission to release through me 
what he uh, has given to me. He's already done it. He's already done it. So what we're doing, asking, is just activating it. He's already given us the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Wow. I can see the wheels are turning. I love it. Don't you love the word of God? Yes. Man, I'm telling you, I'm excited tonight. Thank you. I'm excited every time. All right. So ask and it shall be given or released. Seek and you shall find. Seek means commune. It is intercession. Seek involves obtaining vision. Okay, I can ask and it shall be given, but I need to seek so I can see it. Mm. Amen. Amen. Not just talking about getting stuff for yourself. We're talking about releasing the power of God through you. That's why we're going to pray some effective prayers at the close of this class tonight. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Because we have been given authority as governmental officials of the kingdom of God as ambassadors yes. to bring the will of God into the earth. Thy kingdom come. come. How? By thy will be yeah, done. done. Where in earth in as it already is in heaven. I've given you your orders, says the Lord. Amen. You've got the authority to release it. So ask and it shall be given. Amen. Seek and you will find or get the vision. And knock to confirm it is open. Yes. Oh, you just <laughs> saying praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Woo, let's all praise God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants us to see in these three simple, simple things, not a ceremonial thing, but a protocol, a process. Ask, it'll be released. Seek, and you'll find and understand the vision. Knock for confirmation that it is open and activated through you. Notice the power of agreement. Matthew, uh, let's see, this would be in Matthew 18, 19. If any two of you shall what? Agree. Agree on earth as referring to anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Yes. Wow. Because two one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. Why? Because we multiply our effectiveness in true unity. But the unity has to be based as citizens of the kingdom of God. According to his word and his will. Because that's the blueprint. You know, some people may say, uh, Congress decided that gravity no longer works, so we're going to go jump off a cliff. You will quickly find yeah. out gravity still works. <laughs> right. Okay, so the, the law of the Lord is perfect and it converts the soul. The soul doesn't convert it. <laughs> so we need to pray according to the blueprint, according to the will of God. If they shall ask and agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Partnership. It is a conference call. In Romans 8.26, we see that prayer, what is it? It's the exchange of kingdom intel. God is revealing things to you that the world doesn't know. And you're going to introduce it to the planet. Prayer is the exchange of kingdom intelligence. It's been top secret until you came on the planet. And Jesus authorized you now to bring it. Prayer is the exchange of kingdom intel. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the what? Spirit. The Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, also helps our infirmities. In this case, the, the Bible, when it speaks of infirmities, this word in the Greek means lack of understanding. Did you get that? So likewise, the Spirit helps our lack of understanding. 
for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes what? Intercession. Intercession a conference call. Oh, I said it again. With intel that is in an incubator and being processed for a time to be revealed. The Holy Spirit is a translating communicator. The Holy Spirit translates the language of the kingdom. And we call it tongues. <laughs> tongues is not a religious thing. Tongues is not just something that somebody came up with to show, be, to show that they're spiritual. Tongues are the language of the kingdom. You know, can we make it very simple? Somebody say, well, no, I just think when we get to heaven, we're all going to speak English. Well, what about the Japanese? <laughs> Do we think any of them are going to make it? I think so. <laughs> what about what about all those other languages? Are they going to stand around and go and wonder what they're talking about? <laughs> no, there's a heavenly language that is that is translated by the Spirit into us. Sometimes we speak that language to God. Then we need an interpreter. It says, Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities, our lack of understanding, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought in our normal mentality, but the Spirit itself makes intercession, get, connects a conference call, for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15. Now this is so important. Don't miss this. I will pray with the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. So praying in the Spirit is only effective when we begin to understand we're praying with the Spirit. I was looking at some of the... When the... Uh, president is they called the president of france or prime minister. minister prime minister of france anyway a big guy from france he needed an interpreter and almost simultaneously as he's saying the words the english translator is saying what he said so whatever the holy spirit is saying we're praying with the spirit we're praying what he's saying oh come on somebody amen, amen. and so we're getting the intel of what god is really doing that most people are missing because they're they're spending their time praying about the issues. Yeah. Prayer is the main ingredient. What you pray is what you say from the heart. So we've covered that. But prayer has many elements. We can't get into it tonight. Man, I had to take a lot of stuff out. Um, because we would have been here all night. Look at this. Prayer involves worship and praise. Worship is prayer. Praise is prayer. They are two facets of the work of intercession in prayer. Worship is the receiver. Praise is the transmitter. Worship is the receiver. Praise is the transmitter. Again, a conference call. <laughs> now look at this. In John 4 and 20 and 24, the woman said something to Jesus, and let's look at it in light of what we're saying. Our fathers worshiped in the mountain. But Jesus said, it's not the place that determines the worship. But being yielded to the position or to the person of the spirit of truth in us. The woman said, we worship in this mountain. 
Jesus basically was saying it had nothing to do with the mountain. But they that worship the Father shall worship how? In spirit, capital S, and in truth. So what he was saying was that it's not the place, but it's being yielded to the person of the Spirit of God that is truth in us. So worship, simply put, I mean, we do all these fancy things, but since, simply put, in the Greek and Hebrew, is to bow down. It is to submit and to yield. Worship is to bow down, to submit, and to yield. I can almost tell you what you worship by what you transmit. What you bow down to is what you bring forth. Worship is not just an experience, but a lifestyle of glorifying God. I worship him with how I walk. Amen? Amen. Now let's look at this. To worship is to be poured out flat before God so he can fill you with only him. Prostrate. I like what I heard somebody say, it's into me see. Into me see. God into me see. And we can have corporate worship, don't get me wrong. Thank God, I love corporate worship where we attend church. Uh, our son leads a great time of, of worship and praise. Amen. He is anointed by God because it comes from the heart. He's not trying to entertain anybody. In fact, sometimes I think he forgets we're out there. I want him just, just to share, why do you uh, lead in worship? Not just because it's your job title, but, but just share a little bit about what worship means to you. Um, well, I think worship means to me is, uh, you know, I used to think that it was just a mode of uh, playing music and, and a certain type of music, slow music to fast music when I first started, but it's much more than that. It's a worship is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, the more that my life has become more of a worship to a lifestyle, the more my lifestyle is presented when I lead and guide. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just to be excited. Uh, that the Lord's doing something in everybody and that um, worship too is what you know uh, my dad was talking about is, is worship is you know this thing that we can use but it's not just a song mm -hmm. and I love music and praise does mean music but I know it means multiple other yes. things um, but in a sense it's just music is just a tool mm -hmm. and I think it's just how we use that tool and worship to me is just something that is it's something that we should do every day. It's something that we should uh, we should uh, live our life like that. It should be our lifestyle. Amen. And it should be our life our life to worship Him. Amen. That way, when it comes time to minister to others, or in our even in our downtime, that we have that worship inside of us. Yes, that's what it means to me. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So worship is intimacy. You can't fake it. You may fake it to others, but not with God. So. We need to set the atmosphere on a daily basis in our walk and in our talk. Then when we come in, we can sing slow songs or sing fast songs, but singing is praise. Look at this. Are we all good so far? Yes. Praise is the transmitting of what we've received. Praise is the power of a prayer to transmit prayer is to our praise I should say is to show forth it is to sing a new song so our praise is a reflection of our worship does this all make sense good so yeah that's where the song comes in and it's not always just set to sheet music <laughs> sometimes it's prophetic music Amen. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer what? The sacrifice of praise. That comes from our worship to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks 
to his name. Amen. Praise in the Hebrew. And it's on your sheet. Or write him down quick out there. Praise in the Hebrew is Yada. Yeah. Zamar. Zamar. And Halal. And Halal. Halal. Yada, Yada means to strike the hands. Mm -hmm. Clap your hands, all ye people. Mm -hmm. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. See, that's transmitting the power that we've been receiving. Yes. Yada is to strike or to strike the strings. Zamar is literally to sing songs, mm -hmm. making melody in your heart. Halal is to shine forth. Praise is to, is to yada, to zamar, to halal, because we're walking right in our worship. Our prayer isn't stemming from guilt all the time. Yeah, I mean, we need to say, Lord, forgive me. You ever have to do that? <laughs> I have to do it. So you have to. <laughs> but of course, we're going to ask God to forgive us. But our whole prayer shouldn't be centered around guilt trips. Ephesians 5.19, I love this, says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, it's a concert making melody in your heart to the Lord. Jude 20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, in the intel, the top secret that God is making known. How do we pray in the Holy Ghost? Tongues? Yes, but praying... What God is saying. Yes, I that it's that simple. Father, we thank you right now for our country, for the United States where we are here, and also for the nations of the world. Father, right now, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to freely pray. We pray for those in Washington. We pray for the president. We pray for the Congress. We pray for the Senate. We pray, Father God, for all those that are in authority, in governmental positions, Father God, whether we agree with them. We pray for the offices, Father God, that you would purify and cleanse and do a work, Father, that will begin to see this country turn around and move into the blueprint that you've so clearly put as your constitution. And I thank you, Father, this nation was established on that, that word, the word of God. So, Father, we thank you right now that all the nations of the world would begin to experience the impacting of the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody, help me pray. Yes, Father, right now we pray that you would begin to make crooked places straight. Yes. Father, right now we have the authority and the power in the name of our king to begin to decree a thing. And Father, we decree right now that righteousness is going to stand, yes. that the standard be raised up, not compromised. Yes. And Father, that we wouldn't be religious in men's traditions, but that we would begin to have a revelation and a renovation by the Holy Spirit of the truth that will make men free. We announce the kingdom of God is here. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you. We give you honor and glory and might and dominion in our lives, Father. And may that begin to impact the world for your glory as lights of your kingdom in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Woo! Hallelujah.